This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Welcome to the Financial Beat. Ladies and gentlemen, the beat goes on, as they say, and Logan Sadler is back on the show. And I'm Ron Stutz. We're going to talk about getting you to and through retirement, as always. Logan, how you doing, my man? Ron, I'm doing good. Uh, looking forward to a great show here, and uh, I know we got some good information to talk about, but doing well so far, and, and like I said, looking good, looking forward to a great show. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about today, but uh, first, let me tell everybody how they can get in touch with you to get one of those discovery meetings. Everybody's talking about them. All you got to do is to get a discovery meeting is uh, call this number, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN plan. Call that number. It's for Regary Financial in Southern California. Two offices, Hemet and Redlands. And of course, if you'd like an introductory conversation, a discovery meeting with Logan Sadler, it's not going to cost you anything and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. The number to call is 888-823-PLAN. Well, getting into it today, Logan, I I saw a fun fact uh, earlier this week, and it was uh, this. The average person has an estimated 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. <laughs> Have you had your That's thousands funny. of thoughts today? <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I've already started my day, so maybe I'm only 20,000 in so far. <laughs> but that is amazing. I mean, I know we all think a lot, right? You got a lot of things going on through your head about about dinner, life, what, whatever's going on, right? Yeah, work. Exactly. Um, but man, that's that's amazing. 50 to 70,000 thoughts per day. And I wonder how many of them are good thoughts. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering how many. I, I'm wondering how anybody figured that out. I mean. Yeah, I wonder if someone charted down every good idea they had that day or every thought they had that day. And maybe that's how they got an average because I'm with you. It kind of seems like hard math to check there. <laughs> if I had a, in a, a thought, a, a particularly good idea, I mean, and tried to write it down, I mean, I'd had several other thoughts come before I got it written down. And so I don't know how in the world anybody <laughs> does that, <laughs> but I agree with you. <laughs> it's nice. To that know, is amazing, though. Nice to know that people out there are thinking about something. Hey, uh, you know, for some people, yeah. it's time for spring cleaning. I mean, we got spring weather coming up here, and that often means diving into a cluttered closet and getting cleaned out and organized. And I thought today we could see what principles we might be able to take from a closet clean out that we can apply to our financial lives. So, Logan, I'm going to ask you, how is someone's financial life like a closet? (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, no. (laughs) Um, You know, I mean, just like a closet, I would say everyone has different levels of organization, I I guess is where I can go. I haven't seen everybody listen to the show. I haven't seen everyone's closet, right? But I have seen uh, friends' closets, family members' closets, and things like that, right? And I think we all are are, uh, some of us are very, very organized and everything's in place. And some of us are very, very messy. Some of us might not even use the closet, right? It might just be out on the floor or, <laughs> or stacked on the side of the room there. It's very relatable to me on the uh, financial end there, Ron, because you know I'm thinking of a client in my head where this must have been, I don't know, maybe six months ago or so, they came in for the discovery meeting and went through our process. And you know, at our discovery meeting, we're going over you know, what type of financials they have, their goals, what they're looking to do, timeframes, all that stuff. And so you know, I, I started saying, okay, well, next step is I'm going to need your financial statements. And uh, the lady pulls out this binder, right? And I'll never forget the husband has a smile on his face because like, it's like they've been waiting for this, right? <laughs> and they're ready. They're ready to go. And uh, this binder was color coordinated. It had you know, their, their living trust. It had their will in there. It had all of their investment statements, the most recent one. Oh. And some of those are monthly, by the way. So that means this thing's updated quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, had all their investment stuff in there, their legal stuff, all their tax returns, everything was color coordinated in files wow. and was as organized as you could ever imagine, right? So when I asked for something, they said, here you go, here you go. And they had actually already made copies of everything. So it was like, man, the organization level was, you know, through the charts there. And uh, on the flip <laughs> side, Ron, <laughs> right, there's other people out there where uh, I've had them come in and they have the, the so, to, so to speak, shoe box, right? They go, oh, yeah, here, I got some of those statements. And they'll pull it out, and they're from 2002, right? And so they don't even have a a recent statement, know if that maybe it's an insurance policy or an annuity or a brokerage account. Sometimes they don't even know if that's still open or not. And so there's totally different levels of organization when it comes time to financials. And I think, you know, getting things as organized as you can get them is is super, super important because we're talking about your, your money, we're talking about your assets, your legal work, all that stuff is just so, so important when you need it. You really do need it. 
just two things I want to say here. First of all, I don't want you to come into my house and look at my closet because I would be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and second of all, <laughs> second of all, maybe you could hire that uh, that couple that you talked about first that was so incredibly organized to help you get organized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was really amazing. It was it was it was uh, again. We I meet with multiple people per day, per week, you know, per month, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I've seen just quite a few of them now where they're just so so organized and it's it really is good i mean it, it's obviously we can go too far with everything but i you know it's great to have some organization and have some ideas of where things are at and it, and it, it just makes things more simplistic for everybody that is amazing i i admire those people and you know it's all <laughs> it's always overwhelming to start the process of cleaning and organizing your closet for a lot of us and for most people it's probably no different when it comes to getting organized financially how can somebody out there listening to the show today even start organizing their financial life yeah, I think one of the biggest things out there, Ron, is when you look at you know all your accounts, all your statements, everything. And I know, like I said, part of our process is at our discovery meeting. I, I we like to you know obviously ask questions about where things are at, what type of you know insurances do you have, any type of policies, bank statements, all that stuff, tax returns. But it's very interesting. I think one of the easiest ways to start, Ron, is really just kind of going through what you have, right? And so, four hundred one ks. How many four hundred one ks do you have? Some people have two or three or four of them, right? You look at your last year's tax return, get that in a file and get that up there. Your legal work, do you have a trust, a will, or, or do you have anything like that drawn up? Get that there, right? And so I think just kind of starting with the basis of what you kind of have, um, the most important too is insurance policies. I have some people that swear they had a life insurance policy, but aren't really sure where it's at, <laughs> right? And they maybe I don't have an insurance policy, right? And so, I, you know, it's just one of those things where a lot of us buy those when we're younger and we just kind of forget about them. And some of those companies might be bought and sold a few times and now you have no idea where it's at, right? So I think keeping track of all of those types of documents is super important. And I always tell people that you don't need monthly statements in there. You don't need it every week. You don't got to go in there and organize it. But once per year, you know, get a folder or, or, or a binder or something to put something in and just kind of organize it with some different folders and put in there the end of the year statements, right? So maybe at the end of the year, you get your taxes done. Perfect. That's one of them. Put it in there. Last end of year, maybe brokerage accounts or 401ks, insurance policy, whatever it is, and, uh, and bank statements and just kind of organize them that way. Way. Just keep it very simple. You don't got to do it every day, but just at least once a year, check in to make sure, hey, you know, every year around maybe tax time, uh, you get all that stuff put together and just, just try to keep things as organized as you can. Oh, man, these are all good thoughts for sure. Get back to that in just a second, but I want to remind everybody you're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, 888 uh, 823 plan is your number to call if you'd like to have a discovery meeting. More on that coming up here. We're talking about the financial closet, and, and Logan, once you've gotten all those items out of their hiding places in your closet and your financial closet. Maybe you got this off the top shelf or this from the bottom of the stack of, of uh, items over here. What are some other tips that you would recommend for organizing your financial closet? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at your overall financials, right? I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go in there. And it's funny because everyone's a little bit different, right? I think when you look at uh, your investments, I think that's a good place to start. Group all your similar investments together, right? I mean, you look at things like all your different types of uh, brokerage statements, all the different types of 401ks, everything like that. Look at all your different types of statements and get those kind of put together. Being a little bit more organized there can also help maybe be a little bit more efficient for the retirement plan and maybe maybe help returns or maybe limit more risk or, or whatever the scenario is, it might be more beneficial that way. So I think grouping all your stuff together, getting all that together where it's easy to identify which accounts you might you have. Again, I think that's super, super important. Yeah, Next, getting, I was, getting all those okay. similar things together, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a great idea. That's going to help. But what about a, a budget, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. a monthly budget? What kind of tips do you have for us there? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a great spot, Ron. I think the budget is something where it's amazing because, again, that's one of the questions I ask, right, <laughs> during, our, uh, during our process is, hey, you know, if something happened and you're ready to retire or, or whatever, whatever situation we're talking about, but let's just say you're getting ready to retire, what type of income do you need to support your lifestyle, right? Or even your current lifestyle. And a lot of people know, well, I make 150000 a year, or I make 400000 a year, or 80000 whatever the amount is. They kind of know how much they make, but not really many people know how much they spend, right? Yeah. And, and when I ask that, Ron, it's funny because people go, oh, no, this guy's putting me on a budget, right? And that's not, that's not why I'm asking that. The real question is just to kind of get an idea of if we're planning for retirement, we got to kind of have a ballpark of what type of income we're going to need to support your lifestyle. And so I think having that monthly budget is important for someone that's 20, and it's important for someone that's 60, right? It allows you to really kind of know what you have and I, or what you have coming in, what you have going out. And I think getting a budget on paper 
is super important. Or, or if you're you know more techie, uh, a, a spreadsheet or something like that will obviously be just as good. But I think just getting something written down to where you know where your money is going, and so you could really monitor it a little bit more easily and know where you kind of stand each month. And again, I tell people you don't have to check the budget every single month. Maybe every every six months, check back in on the budget and see where your spending is or where things have gotten out of hand. And again, it doesn't mean you have to spend less or like that, but just allows you to understand what money's coming in, what's going out. And I guarantee you, right? I'm not allowed to say guarantee about many things in this business, but if you actually write down the budget and look at things, I guarantee you, you'll find some areas of your spending where you go, man, I could easily, you know, adjust this one, maybe lowering it, or or I should be putting more here. Or when you when you're able to kind of write things down, it really just kind of gives you a roadmap for your budget of where where money should be going. Well, these are all really good tips for folks out there who want to get a little more organized. And uh, I would certainly suggest you have a conversation with Logan Sadler about this because he can tell you other things that need to be put together and all that kind of thing. But I know that there are lots of people out there today who are incredibly disorganized and don't know <laughs> where this is or where that mm-hmm. is. And I would place myself into that category in some uh, to some degree as well. And uh, they might like a discovery meeting just to have an opening conversation with you to get to know you a little bit better. And uh, I'm going to give out the phone number in just a second. But when, when somebody gets a discovery meeting, whether it's you know on the phone or, or whatever it is, what kind of things do you talk about? Yeah, it's a good question, Ron. I think a lot of the times it really starts with what type of advisor are you looking for? What stage of life are you in? You know, a lot of what we do is more retirement planning based. So most of our clients, again, maybe you out there listening to the show, maybe you're 50 years old or 65 years old or 60 years old, and you're just kind of getting to a place where you've gathered up some assets, you have you have some different tools and things like that in your uh, current you know repertoire or portfolio, and you're just looking at your overall situation, and maybe it's just trying to help get things organized, maybe consolidate things down, but a lot of the times just getting things ready and on track for retirement, and uh, that is really what our specialty is. We've helped you know lots and lots of families over the many years we've been in business, get ready to plan and prepare for retirement. Building things like an, you know, an important income plan and a predictable income plan is super important. Um, looking at all the different five pillars of retirement planning, we talk about tax planning, everything like that. And it really all starts that discovery meeting just to kind of see where you're at. Um, you know, it lets you uh, introduce yourself uh, to us, it allows us to introduce ourselves to you, and just kind of get, a, get an idea of where you're trying to go. And again, see if we're the right people to help get you there. All right. Well, hey, here's a number to call. I hope you will write it down if you haven't already, 888 888- Eight two three plan That is 888-823-7526. But the easy way to remember it is by using the word plan because we all need a plan. 888-823-PLAN. Call that number today. Leave a message with your name and your phone number. You'll get a call back and then you can have your discovery meeting. No cost, no obligation. And you know who you're going to talk to? Logan Sadler, the same guy you hear on this show every week. Logan Sadler's number, one more time, 888-823-PLAN. I'm Ron Stutz, and we'll be right back with more in just a moment. Stay with us. This is The Financial Beat. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is here. I'm Ron Stutz, and we're going to talk more about getting it to and through retirement in just a second here. But let me give you a very important phone number, 888-823-PLAN. If you've been listening to this show for a while, I hope that you have written down that number. Maybe you've even memorized it. I, I, I repeat it sometimes during my sleep, you know, because <laughs> I get to say it so much. But 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. That is uh, for Regary Financial. Two convenient offices, Hemet, Redlands, wherever you are in Southern California or anywhere in the world, really, write down that number, 888-823-PLAN. It is good for a discovery meeting. All you got to do is leave a message with your name and phone number. You'll get a call back, and then you can arrange a time to have your conversation session with Logan. Maybe a Zoom connection, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. Hey, Logan not only has this radio show here, and uh, there are podcasts that people can get if they don't happen to catch the show one time. You can go find it. And uh, also a variety of YouTube videos are out there. Tell our listeners who may be new to the show about those. Yeah, Ron, like you said, we uh, we are very passionate about getting education and some information out there. So we have uh, the radio show and the podcast. So you can head over to um, wherever it is you download podcasts. Might be Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify. And there's over 100 episodes on there recorded. And again, we add to that pretty much every week. There's a new one uploaded on there for you to check out. And uh, so head over to, like I said, wherever it is you download podcasts and The Financial Beat and with Logan Sadler. And you can click subscribe and follow along there. 
as well, we have a YouTube channel. So we do different content on there as far as more more videos and uh, more target focused information, more things like, you know, hey, uh, four things you should consider before looking at annuities or what type of uh, taxes will you have on your retirement or Secure Act 2.0, right? A lot of these different topics that come up and a lot of them are from people that write into the show and uh, give us some good questions and some good things that we might want to bring back to you. So head over to YouTube again, type in The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler and you'll be able to follow along, click subscribe and uh, check out our weekly videos. Hey, you know, sometimes we talk about the crime of the week on this show, and there's some crazy things out there that are on the books that end up being in, uh, being crimes, federal crimes, <laughs> and you wonder, you know, how they got there. I guess it's because somebody did it one time and they want to make sure that, you know, it, it doesn't happen again. But have you ever been to Massachusetts? I have not. It's on, it's on the list, though. <laughs> yeah. I, I love to go to Cape Cod, but I've never been there either. And mm-hmm. uh, I read something about the Cape Cod National Seashore this week. Did you realize it's a federal crime to drive on the beach there without a pressure, uh, without a tire pressure gauge in your car? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was not aware of that, but that's, that's, that's an interesting one there. And I wonder what the reasoning is there behind that, unless I'm missing something there. I, I, I don't know, man. Maybe, <laughs> you know, they want to make sure that people don't get stuck on the on the beach if they have yeah. low low pressure and maybe if you have to get a tow truck or something to get you out of there maybe yeah that's an interesting one there like you said that's, that's probably one of my favorite segments we do here and there is the crime of the week because we never know what it's going to be <laughs> that particular thing is just kind of overkill i think i mean i agree with i, you. I think most people would have the common sense to make sure they have decent tire pressure before they head on on the beach but you know that's just me so yeah i'm with you <laughs> hey, let's talk about some classic pre-retiring mistakes that uh, people make out there and and you can give us some some examples of people you've seen make these mistakes and describe the consequences that they had to face after that. Uh, okay. A lot of people out there may be investing at the age of 59 the mm-hmm. same way that they invested at 39. And that's a really serious mistake. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, I always say it's famous saying, but I always say it on the show because it's one of my favorite things is most of the time, right? Most of the time, what got you to retirement will not get you through retirement. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times, like you said, investing like you're in your 20s or 30s is not typically the same way you should be investing in your retirement years. And a lot of the times it's because you're in your focus has shifted from the accumulation phase, right? So where you're trying to grow your assets and you have longevity on your side, you you know, the markets are a great spot to be and you got, you know, 10, 20 year time horizon before you're really going to need to be withdrawing money, it typically is a better time to be more aggressive like in your in your early 20s and 30s. The problem with your, you know, late 50s or mid 50s or early 60s is pretty soon you're going to need to start taking some income from this, right? So instead of adding to the portfolio or the uh, the account every month, you're going to probably start want to start withdrawing from that account every month or year. So it's super important that you understand the shift of focus from growing assets to, to starting the distribution phase, which is taking income. And now again, that doesn't mean we're not trying to grow the portfolio. It doesn't mean you don't have some of your money at risk. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that you should be investing for a little bit different purpose because there is a shift from investing for growth versus uh, you know investing for for income. It's just a totally different time frame. And if done incorrectly, Ron, as we've talked about many examples on this show, it, it could be very very catastrophic to a portfolio. Where unfortunately, I've seen it a lot where people are a little bit too aggressive leading up into those retirement years. Maybe they're five years till retirement. Maybe they're two years till retirement. Maybe they're in retirement, and all of a sudden, you know, we have a huge shift in the markets, and it could really really uh, have an impact on how that that income plan and how that overall financial plan might have worked out over this next decade or two. So it's important to to really look at how you're investing, for what time frame you're in and what your goals are, and, and really making sure you're not hurting yourself, even though you think you might be helping yourself. You want to really make sure you're, you're meeting with a professional or your advisor, and you're really, really understanding where you're at based off your time frame. Logan, you know, we talk about Social Security a lot on this show, and a lot of people make the mistake of starting Social Security without any kind of a plan or strategy. They may start started at the wrong time and don't really understand all the implications of doing that. What do you tell folks about that? Yeah, Social Security is one of the biggest investments that most people have, right? A lot of people aren't even aware of how much they've paid into it. I mean, sometimes it could be you know hundreds of thousands of dollars that you have in this account so to speak, right, in your name, that is going to pay you an income stream when you're ready. The The biggest thing is, Ron, as you wait, right, typically the amount would go up every year you wait to take it. 
And what most people's train of thought is, hey, everybody should take it at 62 because I don't know how long I'm going to live, right? I hear that all the time. Yeah. And for some people, that is right. I have had some people where I have had said, hey, based off maybe health circumstances or your income or your situation, it does make sense to take it at 62. But there's also many clients where I've said, hey, it doesn't make sense to take it till 63, 65, 68, 70, right? It just depends on your overall situation. So it's one of the biggest investments you have. And it's so crazy to me because some people don't even put much more thought into, yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and take it, right? They don't look at the tax implications. They don't look at the implications to the plan. They don't look at any of that type of thing, right? Any of those type of circumstances. So it's super, super important to really, again, make sure you're meeting with a professional. And and that's part of what a, a real financial advisor should be doing, right? They should be analyzing your tax situation, your income situation, social security, investments, all of that, because it's so, so important to make sure that they're all in sync and they're all complimenting each other about what we need this plan to do. And again, Social Security for most people is such a big, big, important part to the plan. We're talking about a couple more classic pre-retiree mistakes uh, in just a second here, but uh, 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. We call it a discovery meeting. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes here. But another mistake that people make is assuming that most of their retirement health care needs are going to be covered by Medicare. And and that is not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. Yeah, you're totally right on that. And uh, I think one of the things we do really well here at our firm and what we've really tried to build over the last, you know, really 20, 25 years or so is just trying to build out that full service firm that um, if we can't do it, we have access to people that can, right? And people we've trusted and worked with for some of them 10, 15 or 20 years long. And so we work with a Medicare expert actually that is, you know, it's actually a separate firm. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, if you don't want to use them, you don't have to use them. But we work with a big different group of CPAs, uh, attorneys, as well as Medicare, because it's one of the most important parts as well to planning is looking at your healthcare costs and things like that as we go. So it's super, super important to understand what type of coverage you actually have with healthcare and Medicare and seeing how that fits into your overall plan. Yeah. And, and one more thing I wanted to mention here is taking on additional risk to make up for lost time is what a lot of people do when they feel like they're really behind, they're running out of time before they leave the workforce, and they want to make some real gains before they go into <laughs> retirement. And that can really that can really devastate your plan if you don't do it right, that's for sure. And, you know, that's not something something good to do. Well, Ron, let me ask you a question, right? So yeah. let me ask you a question there. So I've asked this to clients before, too. I go, okay, what's the difference between going to Vegas, right? You're a little down on your luck and going to Vegas and betting it all on black, right? Is yeah. there much of a difference? Yeah. Probably I, not. I, no. And, and that's the thing I always tell people with investing, you know, a lot of people say, oh, the market is gambling. Well, to an extent, right? There's ups and downs and things like that. But being very thought out about your approach and having an actual plan and, and understanding your risk tolerance is something that is so important to investing. And you don't want to go in there, you know what, you're a little down your luck and saying, you know what, if I just made 20% the next two years, I'd be fine, right? So I'm going to go ahead and be way, way too aggressive for my port, my comfortability and what the portfolio. And what happens if we had a down market? Believe it or not, the market does go down, right? So <laughs> it's something where it's important to understand uh, your time frame, your goals, your needs, and, and everything like that. And it's super, super important to understand the impact of the decisions. And I think, you know, again, that's one of the things we love to do with our clients and people that want to come on board with our firm. You know, most of the people we work with out there, Ron, they might have, you know, $300,000 for retirement. They might have $3 million for retirement. And what we're able to do is really kind of go through what their scenario would look like. Their goals are, you know, maybe they're five years from retirement. Maybe they're a year from retirement. And going through it, really building out the income plan, seeing what type of assets they have, analyzing Social Security, looking at the tax planning side, and also identifying what comfortability we have with risk and what the risk first reward would be if we took more risk. Would it, would it be a more beneficial or would it not? And so we're able to kind of look at all those different situations and really recap everything into a financial plan that we can, you know, again, go over each and every year with our clients to make sure we're staying on track. And that's something that we do with every client that comes on board because we feel it's so, so important to not focus on just investments or product or something flashy, but also focusing on all the other planning topics and and different things that are going to come up that are as important to the plan as anything else. So if you're one of those people out there, maybe you're a few years away from retirement, maybe you just started retirement, definitely think it's time to uh, give us a call. I know some of you guys have been coming in lately, have been listening to the show for months or even years and are just now getting around to making the phone call. So we appreciate it. And I look forward to, to meeting with you guys and go ahead and give us a call. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. 888-823-PLAN. 
That number is for Regary Financial. Logan Sadler, the guy you hear on this show every week, is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer there and would love the opportunity to get to know you and to work with you. And it's up to you. You don't have to. You're not obligating yourself at all when you make this call. And it's not going to cost you one penny. 888-823-PLAN. You can get a discovery meeting uh, via Zoom. You can have a connection that way. And uh, you look at him. He looks at you while you're having your conversation. Or uh, you might want to come in one of the convenient offices at Regary Financial. It's totally up to you. As I said, no obligation at all. And uh, it would be a very, very lucrative thing to do that just to get some peace of mind on what your situation is. Uh, Logan Sadler can take a deep dive into your situation and, and find out exactly where you are, give you a good assessment, and then tell you perhaps what you need to do in order to get where you want to go in your retirement and have the kind of lifestyle you've always wanted. Uh, Again, that number to call, 888-823-PLAN. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. You're listening to The Financial Beat. I'm Rod Stutz. He's Logan Sadler. We'll be back after this. Don't you want to see sharp and not be flat in retirement? This is The Financial Beat. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Regary has two convenient offices, one in Redlands, one in Hemet, wherever you are in Southern California or anywhere in the world. Remember that Regary Financial works with all three generations of some of the client families. Many clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. And of course, Logan Sadler would be glad to talk to you in whatever generation you find yourself. The number to call to get a discovery meeting with Logan is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-PLAN. You need a plan. It's an easy way to remember the number, 888-823-PLAN. And you can have a, a conversation with Logan that is not going to cost you anything at all. You can have a discovery meeting on the phone, or maybe you might want to do one via Zoom, and you might end up in one of Logan's convenient offices. It's totally up to you, but again, it's not going to cost you anything. You're not going to carry with it any kind of obligation. One more time, that number, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, Logan, I read a quote of the week earlier this week. It's from Zig Ziglar, that old positive thinker, <laughs> motivational speaker. Yeah. And uh, boy, he had, he had some really great things to say, and this is one of the best. He said, expect this the best prepare for the worst capitalize on what comes that is about as good as you can get right there right yeah. <laughs> um yeah i think that's like you said he has so many uh just memorable and, and and timely quotes that you could probably talk about on this show every week really yeah um and but yeah i mean that's very very similar to what my philosophy is 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 to retirement planning is you know i meet with a lot of people ron where unfortunately they're only planning for the best case scenario right and so yep. they're really just setting themselves up to be let down right because if anything goes not 100 percent perfect the plan's not going to work or there's going to be some you know really big uh, devastating outcome. So I think kind of that mindset is very very you know near and dear to what what I feel and how I, I feel about retirement planning and, and a lot about life really. So that's a that was a great quote. Yep, I, I, I hope for the best, but prepare for the worst for sure. And yeah, then, and then you're that's covered. awesome. Uh, is there really such a thing as having guaranteed income in, in retirement? And maybe the question I should be asking is really guaranteed by whom? What are some of the retirement income sources that people might view as predictable, but really aren't completely predictable. I know we talk mm -hmm. about, you know, income streams on the show a lot, but yeah. what what is it that's really predictable and, and what things are not? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, right? I always tell people when you look at um, most types of guaranteed income, when you hear that word guaranteed, you got to be very, very careful, right? Yeah. Is this someone just saying that or is that is that really a guarantee? And so, you know, when you look at guaranteed income streams, um, you know, I always say, in, in my opinion, not, not, one, not anything in this world is 1000% guaranteed, right? No one knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but there are a a lot of things out there that do have the guarantee behind them of a few different areas. I mean, I look at like Social Security, for those of you that are collecting it, is as close to a guaranteed income stream as you're going to get, right? Something that they deposit money every month in your account or send you something in your mailbox, right? And you get a check every month. Um, pensions, right? Pensions could be a great way to get that guaranteed stream of income. The only other one I know of, Ron, that's the third stream of income is through annuities, right? And uh, again, variable annuities can have some income riders on them that are guaranteed, as well as fixed index annuities can have some guaranteed riders that are that are guaranteed. And what I mean by that is every month, no matter what happens in the account up or down, you're getting a guaranteed stream of income. So there 
are a lot of ways out there, typically three ways, right? To get some guaranteed income in your portfolio as part of your income plan. And I think, mm -hmm. like you said, Ron, examples of what I see out there if when clients come in and we're building out a financial plan, because again, a lot more of our specialty is typically um, with clients that are in that retirement phase or gearing up for it. Maybe they're, you know, five years before, or maybe they just started. And so a lot of our, uh, you know, a lot of our analysis is really looking at income. And so that's one of the biggest crucial points to the retirement plan. So just some examples, Ron. I mean, you look at I examples of some income that's coming in is rental income, right? That's a big one of what some of... So a lot of people have accumulated some real estate and they have income coming in from those properties. The problem is, Ron, I would not uh, put that in there as a guaranteed income, right? Because we all have either rented a house or have had rentals and we know that they're not rented out forever 100% of the time, right? There's always people sometimes moving in, moving out. Some people have a lot better luck than others with, with real estate. I think real estate's a great investment. I think it's a great spot for some people out there to have money, um, but it's not a guaranteed income source, right? So that doesn't fall in there. Some of the variable annuities I've seen out there, Ron, which is, we talk about these a lot, you know, and I, like I say, I, it's very important to understand the pros and cons of each investment. And one of the biggest things with variable annuities is they may sound like a really great investment for some people, and they might have what they call an income rider on there that pays out an income, right? Let's say it's going to pay you out $2,000 a month. Okay. Okay. Some of them, Ron, how it works is when they when the balance goes to zero, right? When maybe there's no more money left in that variable annuity. Yeah. A lot of the time that that benefit that two thousand dollars a month can be significantly reduced. Sometimes fifty percent. Sometimes seventy five percent. So you go from two thousand a month to a thousand a month. Right or or even worse in some cases, Ouch. and so I wouldn't. I don't know about you, Ron, but I wouldn't characterize that as a guaranteed income stream, right? Just because um, in that example, there's there's a lot of scenarios where, hey, what the heck, right? I went from two thousand a month to a thousand a month. So yeah. it's very important to look at. You know, not not all annuities. I always tell people, um, not all annuities are the same. So it's important to understand if you are if you are one of those people out there looking at annuities, making sure you understand what type of annuity you have or which one you're getting, and and really understanding the the metrics of it and making sure. It fits your situation. The other two is probably the most common you hear of as well is, is stocks, right? Mm -hmm. So dividend paying stocks, a lot of clients say, oh, I love buying dividends and I love having bonds in the portfolio for income, right? The problem with both of those is dividends are not guaranteed. Dividends can go up, dividends can go down, they could be reduced, they could, there's all sorts of different ways. Um, and same with bonds, right? I mean, different government bonds or corporate bonds, they could be called or defaulted, or, or there's many different ways that the income off of a bond might not be stable. So again, I like all of these uh, segments here could be used in a financial plan, but it's very, very important to know, Ron, right? And the listeners out there that those are not what I would characterize as a guaranteed income stream. I'm a big believer in diversification. Like I said, real estate could be good. Variable annuities for some people can be a fit. Stocks, bonds, all of that could be good, but it's important to understand those don't fall into the income side as far as a guaranteed income. Yeah, that's, you know, a lot of people think that they may be guaranteed, but no, that's not, not the case at all. Hey, <laughs> give us an example of a time when you, you met with somebody for the first time and you found out right away that they did not establish enough predictable income. They had relied too heavily on the stock market and things just hadn't gone very well for them. Yeah, you know what's funny, Ron, is there's, a, well, I don't want to say it's funny, but it's, it, there, what's a coincidence is that I actually had somebody I'm working with uh, just a few weeks ago who was a, a very uh, interesting story, very nice family, and uh, they came to us through, actually through the radio show, we're listening to the show and called in, and so went through our process, and, and you know, at the discovery meeting, we were talking with them, and they had, uh, they'd done well, they had around one point, just shy of $1.2 million they had accrued for, for financial, or for their, for their retirement, and, you know, really nice, great family, a great story and all that. And, um, you know, they went with one of the big firms out there originally when they retired, one of the ones you see on TV all the time. We're starting their process and retirement journey, and they had been with the firm for about two years. Unfortunately, they didn't get a lot of in-depth planning, right? They just had, hey, you know, we, we think stocks are the best way to go. We're going to put basically 100% of your money all in stocks, and you're going to take out maybe 4 or 5% from there. So if you got a million dollars, you know, you're going to take out 40 or 50,000 a year, and you're going to be fine, right? That was kind of as, as, as deep as their planning went. No tax planning, no, no further looking at different income streams or anything like that. And unfortunately, Ron, this guy's risk, the family's risk, sorry, was a lot higher in the portfolio than they were actually comfortable with, right? They didn't really understand that they didn't have a lot of uh, what I would call broader markets or, or alternatives or any type of other things out there other than just stocks, right? So what happened last year, Ron, during 2022, we know <laughs> that the yeah. market had some struggles, right? To <laughs> say the least. <laughs> yeah. 
And so anyway, long story short, you know, the client had 1.2 million in there. They were taking about $60,000 a year of income out. Problem with that was their portfolio risk was around 85%. So um, some of you out there that haven't had a risk score ran on your portfolio, that is something we do as part of our process just to kind of get an idea of where you're currently at and where you want to be. And so long story short, 1.2 million taking around $60,000 a year of income out of it. The problem was that account went down 25% last year. Right. Yeah. So with the income they had taken out in that, they were down over two hundred and eighty thousand dollars, right, in one year. And so they had no other guaranteed sources of income other than social security. And so when you look at the client like that, right, it, it was something that where they felt pretty confident when the market was going up. But unfortunately, when the market's going down, they really didn't have a whole lot out there other than growth stocks in the portfolio that were just really uh, not doing well. And again, not saying the market's not a good spot to be because it is a really good spot to be with portions of your money, depending on your risk tolerance and goals. Um, but just in this case, Ron, they had really no other types of guaranteed income streams or either any other income streams like real estate or, or any other alternatives or anything like that. So it's just one of those cases where it's super, super important when you're picking a financial advisor to really understand your plan and making sure you're getting that comprehensive plan and that income plan that you feel comfortable it's going to last during up markets and down markets. We appreciate your being with us today on the Financial Beat. Logan Sadler, of course, VP, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan one-on-one to talk about your individual situation. We're talking about predictable income on today's show. And Logan, even if you do establish some predictable income streams, what do you do when inflation decreases the buying power of the income? And we've certainly seen enough of that in the last uh, Mm -hmm. couple of years here. (laughs) Yes, we have, right? And uh, that's a great question. There's a couple couple alternatives that I like to throw into a portfolio or to an income plan is, you know, like let's say we're going to use income annuities, right? Let's say we're going to use a fixed index annuity or maybe even uh, the market or other types of of portfolios for this. You could use it, it depending on the client. You could do both. But essentially what we'll do is we'll set aside a bucket of money sometimes. And sometimes it's in an annuity that's going to be growing at a guaranteed rate until they're ready to start taking income down the road. So we'll ladder income, so to speak, to where, you know, hey, let's say uh, at 65, you're going to have $50,000 a year of income turned in based off how much money you have. Uh, So you have $50,000 a year coming from the portfolio. But in two or three years, you might have another $10,000 a year coming in from the portfolio, right? So every so many years, kind of ladder in some different income streams if it's possible in the portfolio. So that way, you're always getting a little bit of an increase in your plan, right? And sometimes that's through Social Security. We have some clients where we'll take one uh, one spouse is at this age, the other one at this age. It might be a pension. It might be an annuity. But just kind of laddering different sources of income, I think, have been very, very beneficial to our clients. And a lot of them like the idea of, hey, at some point, I'm getting a raise, right? My, my, my income is going to be going up. And there's also other fixed index annuities that we've used in portfolios, Ron, that actually, um, I always say, you know, the industry is listening, right? The industry is very smart, and especially a lot of these insurance companies can be very smart because they understand, right? What do people want? A lot of people want a portion of their money to have guaranteed incomes on them, right? Right. The other thing is what's happening is, like you said, Ron, inflation. So some of these uh, annuity companies out there, some of them have where they actually have a potential for the income to go up. So let's say it's going to start paying you, you know, based off how much money in there, it's going to start paying you, let's say, you know, fifteen thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Well, if if that annuity performs well, it might go up each year or every year that that annuity performs well, your income could increase and then never go back down to that original amount. So it's a good way to have some extra inflation protection sometimes built into the portfolio. Um, So through those two scenarios I just recommended is something that I definitely think when you're building an income plan is something worth taking a look at and just seeing how they kind of fit, again, just based off what the client's goals and, and needs are. What are some of the reactions that you get from clients when you show them how a reliable and predictable retirement income is actually possible. Yeah, you know what's funny, Ron, is uh, even that client we were talking about earlier, the one that didn't have an income plan really that was that detailed or had some predictable income in it. It was amazing because he actually did come on board with our firm and decided to move up, move his money over and, and move forward with our firm. And it was interesting because like what he had said, he never really felt like he had peace of mind, right? Mm-hmm. He said he was just every, every time they heard the market was down or every time he watched the TV, he was like, man, 
I just hope I don't have to stop taking income, right? Because again, you've worked your whole life, you've worked 20 or 30 years for this money, or maybe 40 years for this money, and it's your retirement nest egg that you want to last and, uh, you know, for your spouse and you. And some of you might even want to leave a legacy behind, might want to leave some money behind to the kids or grandkids. And so it's so hard to do any of that if you're not confident in your income plan. And so, you know, it's one of those things where I've had people tell me, and even that exact client had said, I've never really felt like I had a, you know, a, a solid retirement plan until looking at the different asset classes and different investments out there. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, Ron, when you look at the physical house, right? Like we talked about, you have the roof, you have the walls, and then you have the foundation. And it's super important when you're looking at your retirement plan to understand that you need some of your investments to grow, right? Maybe that's your market portion of your money. You need some of them to, to be good longer term investments. You need some of them in the middle, what we call the walls that maybe have some risk, but not nearly as much as traditional markets. And then you need some of it, which is your foundation, which can't lose any money, right? Or maybe has some guaranteed income streams from it. So it's super, super important when you're getting ready to retire that you understand exactly where that next paycheck is going to come from. And uh, it's amazing, like I was saying, when you put together that comprehensive plan, we're able to show clients, you know, hey, here's your risk tolerance. Here's how long income could potentially last. Here's how much of your income is guaranteed. It really is amazing when you kind of see both of them kind of nod their head and smile and go, okay, okay, we actually have a full plan here, right? We're not just hoping the market does well. And if not, we might be in trouble. And I think that's something that's the best part about what we do, Ron, is I feel such such satisfaction and such, you know, uh, you know, really just so grateful that a lot of people uh, decide to move forward with our firm or at least go through our process and, you know, see if we're a good fit. Because I think that's one of the best things that we do for the families out there. Again, there's a lot of different financial advisors out there that specialize in different things. And I think our, our definitely our focus is really specializing in that retirement planning phase because we feel we do a really good job of putting together a solid retirement plan that's built to last, looking at tax planning, legacy planning, and all the other things that are, that are super, super super important to a solid retirement plan to give you that peace of mind to live that next, you know, 20 or 30 years of retirement. So, you know, again, we do all that. It all starts with the discovery meeting. Again, like Ron always says, we don't pass you off on anybody else. You actually meet with myself and uh, how it all works is you call the number Ron gives you here and you actually get to come in and meet with me either here at one of our offices or via Zoom. And we could kind of, you know, put everything out on the table and, and take a deep dive into what it is you're trying to accomplish and see if we're the right ones to get you to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. I think the bottom line of what uh, uh, Logan Sadler and the folks at Regary Financial do, uh, they can provide you a peace of mind so you don't have to worry about these things. You don't have to lie awake at night worried about outliving your money. There's no such thing when you have a good plan put together with some guaranteed income, predictable income, I should say, and Logan Sadler can provide that for you. All you got to do is have an, an opening conversation. We call it a discovery meeting. You get to know him. He gets to know you. And then you can move on from there if you like. If you don't, hey, that's fine too. There's no obligation, but there's no cost for this conversation. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. 888-823-PLAN. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. It's all about getting you to and through retirement. Logan Sadler is on the radio. Go tell everybody you know, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Financial Beat, the show that makes sure your financial plan has the perfect pitch. Welcome back to more of The Financial Beat. Uh, Logan Sadler is on your radio. He's the Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Uh, Regary Financial has been around forever, working with uh, three different generations of client families. Many of those clients have been with the firm for more than a quarter of a century. And uh, they have terrific partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists. It's kind of a one-stop shop, if you like, at Regary Financial. And you can get well-rounded guidance in all things financial if you become a client. You can get a discovery meeting at no cost whatsoever. It's not going to cost you a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all. In other words, no strings attached when you have this conversation. So why not check it out? You'll have a conversation with Logan Sadler either on the phone or maybe via Zoom, or maybe you might want to come into one of the offices for an in-person visit. It's up to you. Logan is uh, willing to accommodate you, whatever you want. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. And again, it's just a conversation. You're not going to obligate yourself to do anything at all. Now, let's go to the mailbag here, Logan. I, I love this segment of the show because we get some great questions from clients out there, and you do a great job mm -hmm. answering these questions. First one is from Al, and Al is in West Covina. Uh, Al says, I have a 401k 
from an old job that I'm obviously not contributing to anymore since I work someplace else now. It had been doing really well for a while, but dropped a lot in 2022. Should I go ahead and roll over to an IRA and invest differently? Maybe I should have rolled it over already, but what should I do now? <laughs> yeah, great question, Al. Um, one of the things I, we talk about a lot in the show is the uh, 401k rollover, right? So a lot of you out there that are in Al's situation, a lot of you guys probably do have old 401ks, right? Maybe old IRAs. Maybe they're at an old company you don't work at anymore. Or maybe you've retired and didn't move it. There's there's many different scenarios. But uh, to your question, Al, there, there's a lot of advantages to rolling it over, right? I always say once you're no longer employed there or over the age of 59 and a half, there typically is, is a lot more advantages to the rollover IRA. Well, you know, and I always say I'm not the best fit for every single person out there, right? So I tell people the same thing, Ron, where, hey, whether you're rolling it over to go with our firm or you're rolling it over to manage yourself or, or even with another firm, I would say the same thing where a lot of the times it just makes sense to do the rollover IRA because you have a lot more advantages out there to different different stocks, right? Different ETFs, different mutual funds, different investments overall, alternatives, right? Fixed annuities, fixed index annuities, you know, a lot of different products and services that you could typically get, um, maybe even more active management styles or, or whatever it is you're into or whatever it is fits your you know your, your risk tolerance, there is typically a lot more options like that outside of the 401k, right? While you're working, while you're putting money away, while you're getting the company matched, the 401k is a really, really great spot for most of us to save for retirement and accumulate wealth. The downside is typically you only have a few different investment options, right? Maybe you got 10 different options or 15 different options, and that's about it. So you can't get a whole, you know, a whole lot of customization or, or other asset classes typically. And so it's important to understand that in your situation now, like you said, it, you kind of maybe had lost track of how it was invested. And then all of a sudden you have this, you know, 2022 come along and the markets are super, super volatile. And you kind of find out how much risk you probably had in that, right? And so it's important to understand uh, what typically we'll do in the IRA rollover whether you're managing it or you have an advisor you're going to work with, you typically get a little bit more hands-on and customization as well as kind of identifying what risk tolerance you have, what the goal is for that, and just keeping everything um, you know, as collective and, and, and really as uh, consolidated as you can while also making sure we have someone's keeping an eye on it, you're keeping an eye on it, or whoever it is, to make sure it's being better used. So I would say even without 2022 happening, right, the down market, I would say even without that, it probably still would have made sense to do the IRA rollover and look for somebody like us, you know, our firm, or do it yourself, or, or whatever it is you're looking for. I, I definitely would recommend that option. Definitely give us a call. I'd be happy to kind of further explain. Al, thank you so much for the question. And again, that number to call if you'd like to arrange a discovery meeting and conversation with Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. Again, we appreciate your question. Uh, next question here is from Peggy in Ontario. And Peggy says, I recently inherited an IRA from my dad. Can you help me understand what I need to know about this account? There seems to be some conflicting information online. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with online, right? There's a lot of good information, but there's also a lot of information that might get you more confused than what you're actually looking up in the first place, right? Oh, really? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so essentially, uh, we help people with this all the time, right? We have a lot of clients that are either preparing for retirement, have accumulated assets, or some of them might have inherited assets and are looking for ways to make sure that they're investing it correctly or even going through a lot of the tax implications correctly. And uh, with the inherited IRA, you are correct. There's a lot of different uh, information out there. And that's because rules have changed, right, uh, throughout the years where it used to be when you inherited the IRA, you had, you know, you could inherit it as a beneficiary IRA or inherited IRA. And what you'd be able to do is you take a small distribution from that each year and you'd be able to do what they called the stretch IRA. And you stretch it out over your next you know, 20, 30 years, 40 years of your life and taking small distributions from it and kind of using it as your own retirement account. Now what they do, Ron, right? What we've talked about many, many times uh, as the SECURE Act passed in 2020, what rule came into effect then was what's called the in, implemented the 10 year rule. So typically now when you're inheriting an IRA, if it's after 2020, you actually have 10 years to uh, exhaust that account and take all of the money out over a 10 year time frame. And there's a better way to do that for some, right? Because let's say your dad left you, Peggy, maybe $500,000 um, based off your income that is going to be added on as ordinary income. So you might only want to take out small percentages per year over the 10 years. 
Um, I have one client I'm working with right now where he has very low income and he inherited about $300,000 and he's going to be able to get all that money out pretty tax efficiently mm-hmm. over like a three-year time frame, right? Wow. So it just Great. really depends. Yeah, right. Good scenario. And so it really depends. And what we do is we kind of help walk through, you know, how much the inheritance is, what it's titled, is it IRAs or whatever it is, and then kind of going through your situation, your tax brackets and your plan and seeing how we could best mitigate through this tax exposure and the 10 year rule to really, you know, again, hopefully net the most amount of money we can for your retirement and allow you to carry those assets forward uh, for your plan. But yeah, great question there with that. We can go on for days because there is so many different changes and rules and things like that to apply. And that really is a customized uh, situation where it just depends on what your situation is, income goals, all that stuff. But Peggy, give us a call. We'd be able to walk you through that and kind of go through those uh, steps there and and at least point you in the right direction. Peggy, I hope you will call Logan Sadler's office and arrange to have a conversation before you do anything with this. But uh, first of all, we're sorry for the loss of your dad uh, and glad that you got this inheritance. But uh, there are some certain things you need to do in the right way because you'll regret, regret it if you don't explore all the options. So Call Logan Sadler's office and arrange to have a discovery meeting. 888-823-PLAN. That is 888-823-PLAN. You're number to call if you'd like to get in touch. Uh, Logan Sadler, of course, uh, and Regary uh, Financial uh, have two convenient offices, one in Hemet, one in Redlands. And, of course, uh, uh, listening to the radio show today, I hope uh, everybody's gotten a lot of uh, wisdom from all of this. And uh, in addition to that, there are the podcasts. If you miss uh, a show, you can go back and and catch it there. Uh, The YouTube channel with all sorts of videos. And Logan Sadler wants to get all that information out there in any way he can. And that's why we do this every week. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. A Discovery Meeting is not going to cost you a penny and not going to obligate you to do anything at all beyond that. And that sounds like a good deal to me. So get in touch with Regary Financial today and have your conversation with Logan Sadler. Hey, Logan, it's been uh, my pleasure to hang out with you as always today. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, Ron, I always enjoy the show. Like I say every week, my favorite time of the week here. And uh, felt like we had a great show, gave out a lot of great information. And I just always want to say thank you out there to the people that listen each week on the podcast or radio channel. And uh, we appreciate it. And those of you that call in, I always enjoy our conversations and our meetings. And I look forward to meeting some of you out there that are listening to this as well. And uh, you guys have a great rest of your week here. And uh, we will uh, touch base with you again next week. Join us for the next edition of the Financial Beat with the one and only Logan Sadler, Regary Financial. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.